In today's video, I'm going to explain a few, a few ways of when I was able to grant a veteran service connection as a former VA Raider. So make sure you stick around. Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dwayne Kimball, owner and founder of KMD89 VA Claims Consulting, United States Army veteran and retired VA rating specialist. Today's video, as a former Raider, I'm going to share with you a few, not all, a few ways I was able to grant a veteran service connection. But before we get into today's video, make sure you go out to my website, Amazon, pick up my new book, VA claims success. Now, as a former VA Raider, I adjudicated hundreds of claims. And there was many different ways, many I was able to grant service connection. I'm not gonna be able to talk about all of them, but I will share what I feel are a few of the most important ones, okay? So let's go ahead and get into it. Now, the first way, when the veteran was educated. When I would get a claim and I look at it, within five, 10 minutes, I knew that veteran was educated. And what I mean by that, there's five ways of VA service connection. I talk about it in my book and I have a few videos on my YouTube channel where I explain it. Pre-service aggravation, direct service connection, increase in service connection, secondary service connection, presumptive, that vet knew they were claiming it presumptive. They knew it. They explained it that way. They worded their claim that way. And they submitted additional evidence. A lot of times they didn't have evidence, but sometimes they did. And that was for any of the five ways of service connection. So they met the VA criteria and the regulations for me to be able to grant that benefit. They went through the process. All the development was done, and when the case came to me, I looked at it, and I was able to stamp approved, all right? So, again, most Raiders, especially seasoned Raiders, they'll know within five to ten minutes of reviewing that claim if you're educated or not. Now, I've seen a lot of claims that were submitted by VSOs or lawyers, and I was like, what are they talking about? And it just totally confused me. But for the most part, out of the hundreds and hundreds of claims I adjudicated, veterans did it themselves, all right? So that wasn't unheard of. Now, the second way, when the veteran submitted an actionable and sufficient DBQ and nexus. I was not one of those raiders that submitted a request for that uh, veteran to go to a CMP exam if they had an actionable and sufficient DBQ and nexus. A lot of Raiders today, it doesn't matter if it's sufficient, they're still trying to get you to go to that CMP exam and they're saying, oh, you paid for it. Well, guess what? The VA pays these third party CMP examiners to do the same thing that you did. Okay? so. When the DBQs came out, I had already been rating, I want to say maybe four, five years, something like that, okay? As long as that veteran's DBQ and nexus statement was sufficient, we received training from the quality team on what makes a DBQ sufficient, or actionable and sufficient, okay? All raiders went through that training. What makes a DBQ actually more sufficient? So when I got that 526EZ or that 0995 and I looked at it and I saw that there was a DBQ and I was like, oh yeah, I hope the veteran's information is correct. And if it was, type it up, that's it. They're not getting a CMP exam for me because the VA says in my training, hey, if the veteran submits a DBQ and Nexus and it's sufficient, there's a 38 CFR that says, you can use it and grant the benefit and then move on 
to the next vet. Number three, if the veteran uh, attended a CMP exam, they didn't have a DBQ and or nexus, okay? A lot of veterans didn't, and I still see them win. So they submit the claim. We do a 2507 medical request for the vet to go to the CMP exam. The vet goes to the CMP exam. The CMP exam comes back. One of the things I'm looking at, is it a positive or negative opinion? And then I'm going to look at everything else, all right? Obviously, if it's a negative opinion and there's nothing in the case or claims file to show I need to send it back for an addendum or do further development, I have to deny the claim. But if it's a positive opinion, all the development was done correctly, the veteran meets all the VA regulations, boom, approved, service connected, all right? Now, there's a lot of things leading up to that that I've talked about in some of my previous videos that veterans could be doing uh, before they submit the claim, before they go to their CMP exam, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's the little things that I think that'll get you over the hump. But when that CMP exam came back and it was a positive opinion, all the development was good, the veteran met all the VA regulations and criteria, put my stamp of approval, service connection granted. Now, number four, when the veteran did not send in 10,000 pages of documentation. I've seen a veteran do this. I've looked at some of these cases. And guess what, veterans? I'm not a medical professional. So when you send in 10,000 pages of progress notes, I do know how to go through them and read them, but I'm not a medical professional. I may know, okay, this is assessment, this is the diagnosis. And you may say, oh, well, that CMP examiner has to look at all that information. I can tell you right now, I don't know, I don't know of any CMP examiner that's gonna sit there and look at 10,000 pages of evidence when they have other CMP exams they have to conduct. It is up to us, the veteran, try and put these employees in a position to be successful because they are, nine times out of 10, your claim is going to be successful if everything else falls into place. But this is your claim. If you want to send in 5, 10, 20,000 pages of paperwork, that is totally up to you. I'm not saying not do it, but what I am saying, VA employees on quotas, the CMP examiners, they're going through this information 100 miles a minute. You put 10,000 pages in front of them, it is like a roadblock. But again, you have to make that decision. When the veteran was educated, you heard me talk about it earlier. When I used to get a claim, I could tell within five or 10 minutes, most seasoned raiders could tell that veteran was educated. You have to invest your time and get educated on this so you can be successful. Now, you can also do all those things and still come out with a negative decision. And like I stated before, you have some VA employees to include VA examiners that are not advocates for you. I hear the comments, the feedback after individuals come back from the exam. It is nothing that you can do about it. You can file a complaint. I did that. It didn't go anywhere, but you can do that. But it's not the end of the world. If that happens, you need to know what are your options. But first, what happened? Why did that doctor say no? Let me submit a four-year request. Let me get it. Let me look at that exam. Oh, the doctor said this. All right, now let me look at the notification letter. What are my options? All right, let me resubmit my claim and go at it a second time. Don't sit there and be mad. Well, you could be mad, but make it like two or three minutes. Then tuck your lip in and go on to what you got to do next. Okay, this process is not as hard as you think. There are some people on the other side that make it a little bit more adversarial than it needs to be, but you're a veteran. 
if you're on active duty, we're all built for this. You're built for this fight, okay? So just keep that in mind when you're thinking, what do I do? Where do I go? Invest the time and get educated so you can have full transparency and level that playing field. Now, the sixth and last one. There's a 38 CFR that states the VA adjudicators are not, I repeat, are not to allow their personal feelings to come in. Attitude of the Raider. Okay? I never, not one time, let my feelings come into play. Now, I've seen claims, and I looked at it, and I was like, man, this is paper thin. But the veteran met the criteria to maybe get a C&P exam. And I remember some of those, that C&P exam comes back with a positive opinion. And I'm like, oh. And I'm sitting there, I'm reading that rationale because I'm like, I thought it was paper thin. I didn't think the veteran would get it, but they did. But the key is, I never let my personal feelings come into play and say, oh, I'm going to deny this veteran because they're white. Or I'm going to deny this veteran because they're black or because they're Puerto Rican. Or I don't think that happened to them in service. Or they wrote this lay statement and they're just lazy. I never thought that. Not once. My job was to follow the VA criteria and regulations. And if the veteran met it, met those, and I was able to grant and justify it, that's exactly what I did. But keep in mind, some raiders are not advocates for you. It is nothing that you or I could do about it. Again, and you're going to hear me say this over and over and over and over again, invest your time and get educated. Because when that happens, you can identify it, reset, and go back in that process again and be successful. Okay? So just keep that in mind when you're going through. Now, like I stated earlier in this video, these are only a few. There were so many other ways. I can't get into all of them, but I can tell you the common denominator. The main one was that education piece. That education piece. When that veteran put that 38 CFR on that 526EZ, point me to where they wanted me to look, that court case or that M21 reference, I'm like, oh, okay, let me go look at it. Because Raiders don't have all this stuff memorized. You can't memorize all this stuff. So I would look at it, and I'm going to tell you, nine times out of ten, if a veteran put a 38 CFR, M21 reference, or a court case, they were right. And if they were, they got a C&P exam. Positive C&P exam, all development is complete. They meet the criteria, approved. In and out, simple as that. The veterans that weren't educated, some of them got approved, but a lot of them didn't because they didn't understand the process. So with that being said, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification button, and don't forget to share this video with your fellow veterans. Thank you.